Truthfully, some videos are quite hard for me. Anytime we're talking about toolkits, I get insecure about the fact that something isn't quite right inside it. I know it's always a work in progress. Doesn't matter whose kit it is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what is in my toolkit, which I just recently updated for a trip that I was on. And uh, we're gonna get a snapshot of where this currently is, and maybe I can get some feedback on how to improve it. So let's go ahead and get right to it. All right, so here it is. This is my toolkit, and I have packed this thing as much as I humanly can. In fact, this is the very last rung on this kit. So let's start from the outside. This is a Lockby tool roll. Now, I don't think it was ever meant to store as much as I'm currently storing, but it's a nice showcase of just how versatile this thing actually is. So on the outside, I have a small carabiner, which I can use to clip the entire thing. So if it unravels, I can actually kind of hang it as long as I don't do it all at once and just let it go because some things will go flying out. Now on it, I also have two different types of Velcro wire ties. I find these to be way more useful than standard wire ties, just personal experience. Um, because I can undo them, because I can double them up, to increase the strength. They're particularly useful and you can also undo them. I also have on the outside a scissor. So this is a small uh, Fiskars keychain scissor and it's just small enough that I can make it work. And it's one of the better ones that we had when we tested it. So with that, let's go ahead and actually undo this and get to the meat of the whole thing. As you can see, I really have stretched this to its fullest point, to the point where it's actually difficult to get the damn thing undone. I've got to focus on what I'm doing here. There we go. Yeah, I might want to take a few things out, and maybe I will, and maybe you guys can help me with that. But let's go ahead and take a look at everything inside. All right. So what I like about this kit is that I'm able to have a lot of different types of storage. So starting with the zipper pouch, let's pull these these things out of here. Because, and we'll go to what's inside in just a minute, but the cool thing about this is there's actually a whole bunch of space on the inside that you can utilize as well. So this is a very versatile toolkit and I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, I've used it for a little while, I've tried other things, but I keep coming back to this one. So, this is going to show you, I don't know if it's called paranoia, preparedness, you can call it what you want. But uh, I go with that what if question and see where that takes me quite often. And so in a lot of cases, I have a variety of different tools for different purposes. Starting with this, this is actually, well, a cheat key. I don't want to go into it too much, but what I would tell you is this. This tool is likely to either save your life or get you thrown in jail um, if you have to use it. The goal here, what this does, is it actually lets you access utility closets, um, water taps, and other things in an emergency scenario. And I want to emphasize an emergency scenario. And using this inappropriately is likely to get you into big trouble. But in an urban environment especially, it could also be a game changer and a lifesaver because it'll let you access water, it'll let you get access to power, and many other things. So that is one of the items inside. And this is a cheap version of a Knipex um, universal key. So I went with the cheaper one just because I'm not likely to use it very often, and I think it'll still hold up just fine. So this one was a great beginnings with it, and it's something that I definitely recommend for any kit that's the what if question, maybe in a car or otherwise. Next, we're going to go over here to the very old um, <laughs> Grim Workshop lock picking card. So this is one of the first ones they came out with. I got this way back when, and you'll notice I've attached a screw to it with some nuts. And the whole purpose of this is that when I take them out, I can stack them on top of each other, all the picks. And what I found is they're a little bit sharp on the edge to just grab by any of these small sections. 
So by stacking them, I have a better handle to utilize for actually using it as a lock pick. And there's also the uh, separate um, tensioner as well. On the back, I have a sewing kit that I've taped to it. I've actually glued, so it actually has a backing on the card that lets you stick it to things. And I thought this was a perfect place to stick this card. And it, I have this great kit that I inherited from someone and it, I wish they, I don't know if they still sell them, but everything comes preloaded with a thread with the uh, thing ready to go. You just pull the whole thing out and you can use it for repair. So great tool set for repairing various different things. So there you go. Next up, we have, well, <laughs> miscellaneous is what I'm gonna call it. Um, so a couple of things here. So we have this, which is part of, well, it's, it's a two piece thing. This is UV curing resin glue. I came, came from the Bondic set and I have just the UV flashlight right here, as well as the glue. I got rid of the rest of the components so that it would fit properly in this tin. In addition to that, I have safety pins, paper clips. Um, I meant to put some bobby pins in here, but they're not really necessary when I have these other items. And the other thing that I, I love, and I've used these a ton when I do 3D printing and modifying those, is these are called solder seals. So they take a lot of the guesswork out of connecting wires together. So I have a couple of different sizes in here to utilize, and I shouldn't be doing too much of this, but if I just have a cable that's frayed, I can actually snip them on both sides and then reattach them in a more solid way. And all I need with this is just a lighter and one of these solder seals, and I'm good to go. So I think those are particularly useful. Uh, if you have to make a repair. I don't recommend playing with electronics if you don't know what's going on, and I never would just try to manipulate them. But if I see a damaged wire and I turn off the power for it and I can connect them, the solder seals will actually work to reconnect them. So that's my solution versus having the twist ties. You have to get those just right in order for it to work properly. All right, now that's pretty much everything in the outer pouch. And let's go ahead and start looking at what we have on the inner side. Now, these are all designed to solve specific problems that I might encounter cleaning things. It's not a toolkit that's gonna include a lot of large tools for big jobs. That's not really what this was designed for. That kind of kit would probably exist in a uh, trunk of a car or something along those lines. And I do have that kit. Um, it's still a very much a work in progress. This is a little bit closer to being done. This is something that would go in a bag that I would take with me. Just put that in perspective. So let's start with something that you can't get access to, I'm sorry. Uh, this was actually a collaborative design between myself and Gondek EDC. We were looking to make a very multifunctional prying tool, like a true prying tool that would fit into eight inch organizers. So it needed to be shorter than that but still be very, very strong. So this is a hook pry, as well as a pseudo hammer side as well that you can use. Uh, it has a prying edge on this side as well, a quarter inch uh, slot in here, and you can use this for all different types of things, including, and this was for scraping fire steel. We, we just kind of put some stuff in there just to see what we could do. And of course, his awesome symbol, he kind of fleshed this whole thing out after we talked about it. And man, it's awesome. I think we called this the Persuader, which I think is a great name for a prying tool. Unfortunately, you won't be able to get access to this, but maybe if you bug Max over there enough, maybe he'll, uh, maybe he'll make another batch. So there we have that. Now, next up, uh, and I've thought a lot about screwdrivers in this kit. Um, I'm not completely sold on any particular solution, but Given that I have one of these, it's a, one of the most compact versions, being completely flat, or about as flat as it can get. And inside, I have eight bits, or almost eight bits. So in, and back here, I have a quarter inch to quarter inch adapter, so I can extend things a little bit further. You'll see why in a little bit. I have a um, four millimeter adapter that's been shortened so that it's the same length as the other bits. 
I have some security torques, including a Pentalobe T5, no, T10, I'm sorry, that has five points. That's specifically for certain Leatherman tools and a couple other things. And then we also have a, I think I have a spare, I think it's a T6, if I remember correctly. It's hard to get out, this particular one. Should have thought about that ahead. I might replace that with a better option. But anyway, a lot of different uh, bits in there, and it's a full-size quarter inch. And I like the flat driver because it gives me a little bit more strength when I'm rotating it. That's one part, one part of this kit that will include bit driving. The second part is this one. So I've done a review of this. This is the Fix-It Sticks Ratchet. I love this thing so much. It, it The control, the fact that I can put direct pressure down instead of it being at the end, it's just an awesome setup. And I went ahead and replaced the extender that it had with one that you could slide, it, slide around a screw so that you actually could do it with one hand, potentially. I just think it was a little bit more flexible. And uh, yeah, so there's that. It comes with all its bits, 12 different um, bits on over here. And I also have an extra long T6 for those weird knife issues. Sometimes there's some very small screws that are hard to get access to. On the other side, I also have a quarter inch adapter for sockets. I don't have any sockets in this kit, but if I, if I did decide to adapt it, that's a good place for it. I took out the prying tool that it had, especially because I have this. I don't think it's particularly necessary. There are also other prying implements as well. So there's the fix-it sticks. I think that was the primary stuff for doing screws. So I wanted to have at least two different screwdrivers and have them work together. So I have it so you can either use this, but you can also use this as an extension with that quarter inch to quarter inch adapter. You can actually use it for additional length if need be for different purposes. So you can attach this here. There's just many ways you can integrate it. That's kind of the gist there. I guess we should finish up prying while we're at it. So this is just kind of more of an electronics pry. So I got this on, I want to say County Kong. Yeah. And these are really inexpensive, but I like them because they come to a very thin edge. So this is going to get into places that this larger pry will not, or I can use it as a shim. It's just a good tool that doesn't take up a lot of space and is very, very useful. All right, let's keep going. Uh, let's start pulling out some of the bigger tool items. Aha, yeah. So we can pull out all of the stuff in the back here. Lots and lots and lots of stuff. Like I said, I've jammed this thing packed. So let's start with the larger tools. I have in here pretty much the smallest bolt cutter you can buy. These are just under eight inches. This is the only one that I know of that's under eight inches of this quality. And it doesn't open very wide, but man, this thing is strong and it will snap and cut a whole bunch of different uh, wires up to a much thicker gauge than I could with just diagonal cutters. So I wanted to include this versus other options. Now I do have like some more simple cutters built into this uh, four inch uh, locking needle nose plier. So this is their four inch variant, their four WLN. And I liked it because it actually has rounded heads. This is one of the few that I never got to show when we did our plier video. And it's a really cool piece. Um, and it doesn't take up a lot of space. I liked it for that reason, so I included it in this kit. And if I need something longer, I have a different option for that. Next, we have a five inch Cobra. I don't think I need to explain why a Cobra is a great choice. And then to complement that, I also have the five inch plier wrench. Now, if I had more space, I would have loved to upgrade the size. I think I could fit the one five zeros in here and they're gonna be way more efficient. But one thing I will say about the 125 is that this width is much, much narrower 
than the larger variants. So you might be able to get into spaces with this that you can't otherwise get into with anything else. So I might replace this one, but not necessarily this one. All right, now if I have a really big issue and I have a very tight space, I have a pair of locking forceps. Now these are just some cheap locking forceps. There are other variants, but I like how thin this is. This thing has saved my bacon so many times in trying to find a screw that fell in a weird spot. I mean, you name it. I mean, you wouldn't believe how useful this thing has been. And I don't see it in enough kits. Uh, just because you have a big tool doesn't mean you can even get that tool in a certain spot. And this thing is really small. You'd be surprised. And if I have to, I could theoretically use it in a medical uh, situation as well. I just would have to sterilize it first. But yeah, locking forceps, can't go wrong. Better to have uh, teeth on it though. Make sure that it has teeth because of the type of work you're doing. If you're trying to actually grab something, sometimes they have smooth jaws up here at the tip. Don't get those. You're gonna have a lot less grip. All right, still with the grabbing, is something for more for electronics. These are some very fine uh, pointed tweezers, and they work pretty well. They work pretty well, but I haven't needed to use them. I just figure why not have, why not have a variant that would work in very tight spaces. So that's what that's for. I know there's a lot of what ifs in this, but you're gonna laugh. I think the thing that has, I've used more than a lot of this stuff actually, is gonna to have to be this extraction tool or something like it. These are very inexpensive. They cost almost nothing. But I mean, the situations where I have a screw or something that has fallen and I need to extract it, yeah, this is a very good thing to have. And like so many other things, it takes almost no space. So regardless of what size kit you have, there's really not much reason not to have one of these. It really isn't. I mean, it's just going to save you in places that no other tool will save you. <laughs> so definitely carry one of these in any kit, no matter what size, uh, whether it's a backpack or in a car kit. I actually have a bigger one in the car kit, but even if you have a bigger one, the small one might be the right choice. Okay, let's keep going. I don't know if I'm gonna actually use this in the kit, I might actually remove it, but having a carbide scribe might be useful to mark something uh, on either mild or even hardened steel. So definitely like having this in there because it doesn't cost a lot of space. And occasionally I'm doing modifications and even though this is a kit for more for whatever comes up, I'll still use it for day-to-day -day things just because everything's in a nice place. And then I'll put it back inside. And occasionally when I'm doing multi-tool modifications, I'll go and find this in my kit because it's just something I know, I know where it is. So this is a carbide scribe and they're pretty cheap as well. And just so you know, I will be putting a link to anything I can down in the description and in the pinned comment. All right, let's keep going. Ruler. Very simple, six inch ruler. Um, these wooden pieces, um, I've tried, I haven't pulled out the glue yet, but most of this is for applying the grease, which I usually have in here, or glue in various different, different situations, or cleaning. They can do a whole bunch of different things. So I did have to shorten them, they were far longer. And basically there was one pointed end, they basically were the same things, just longer, like that. So they didn't quite fit, so I cut them down so that they would fit. And I have some long ones and I have some short ones. All right, next up, Super Lube. It's just a very universal lubricant. It's not exactly something you can eat, but it's hot. It's more on the food grade side of things. Um, and it's got a viscosity that kind of lets it stay where it's supposed to be. So it's a good choice and it has a nice applicator. So really inexpensive, really easy to, to, to add to any kit, but that's one of two uh, types of lubricant that I keep. I think I may have pulled out the grease, which I usually keep in here as well, and put it in a separate kit uh, temporarily. I need to order a few more, but I also keep the super lube grease as well. 
Lighter is a necessity. It should be in every single kit, no matter what size, period. Like you can repair things with just fire. And the, other, the only thing I've done with this is I've re removed the child safety collar. One thing that sucks about having that in there, well, a couple things, but the biggest thing for me is that when you hold on to the, uh, the flame and you let it continue to burn, that little piece of metal will start heating up and then you can no longer hold it anymore. But if you take that away, if you remove it, then you can like actually use it properly. That's one of the downsides to having that little. All right, so next up, let's keep going. We have, these are, these are some really cool tools. These are made by Command. And they basically make it a whole series of different tools. And this is their diamond file set. So this is mostly for making small repairs or modifications. And I find that, like I said, sometimes I can't find the exact tool I'm looking for for modifications. And I know that this kit has something I can use. And so I will come and I will pirate that par portion of the kit briefly and then come back. So these are all diamond files with very, very useful shapes. And uh, they all come in this nice sealed container. So this actually keeps them from getting wet um, and just also works as a holder for those tools. On the front, you actually have this collar that can be tightened down. So you have a handle for those files on top of everything else. So I'll put a link to this down in the description if I can find it. I'm pretty sure I st they still exist. And uh, it's a fantastic little addition to a kit of this size. All right, also for cleaning and applying lubrication, some um, Q-tips. But the thing is, is, I liked these when we made the kit for the Leatherman, and these have two different types of applicators, this fine tip and then this bulbous tip. So these are really, really, really useful in general um, for all kinds of things, cleaning, whatever comes up and they're disposable. So that's great. I need to uh, get a new blade for this. I have a whole stack somewhere, but just any simple uh, snap off blade is going to be more ideal than a standard utility knife in this particular application. I don't want to have a spot to sort, you know, to store a whole bunch in here. So it's better to just snap off a little bit at a time and I can end up having it always sharp on me and that's that's important. So some kind of snap off utility blade is going to be something I'll keep. Now, where is the where's the glue? All right, well let's let's we'll come back to the glue. I think I might have taken it I have I should have in this kit. It's hiding somewhere. I should have um, a couple different types of glue, super glue and so on. And I think I might have done an oopsie. And this is just, just an example. And I have taken it out of this kit. <laughs> yeah, looks like I did. So that I'm glad I found that out now. But yeah, it's gonna this kit is also gonna contain three different types of glue. Uh, super glue is number one. Melt glue, which I usually use uh, an Easton glue. It's designed for archery, but you just, with the lighter, you just go ahead and melt some of that and it can hold surprisingly well. And um, the other glue I use often, okay, I can honestly cannot remember it right now, but those two for sure I keep in here. And uh, there's, there's another glue in there that I can't quite remember. All right, now, Let's go quickly to tape. I don't keep that much in this kit, but the two that I find most useful are electrical tape and duct tape, or in this case, Gorilla tape. This is the one inch variety. And uh, yeah, it's just really useful for a bunch of different purposes. You never really know, but tape is always a good idea. And I think that's it. Outside of the lack of glue, I think it worked out pretty well for me. Um, the question I have for you guys after seeing this, oh, I have this too. I'll tell you what that is. 
So bef before, let me say this first. This is um, designed to help with threading. So you wrap this tightly around threads and then stick them together. This is what this is. This is special thread tape. I actually prefer the Teflon type a little bit better, but that comes on a thick roll that takes up way too much space. So I have this for now. So my question for you guys is how would you improve this kit? I don't, I don't feel like this is perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I think I've covered some things really, really well, maybe even too well. And then some things didn't cover enough for just general pairs and other stuff. So where do you think I can improve? That's a big question. I will say the one thing that I am gonna add is some of these extreme notes, probably if I can fit them. Um, and then of course we gotta fit the glue in there. All right, well, thank you for your time. I hope this was at least interesting. Um, maybe you got some ideas for your own kit. Maybe you can help me with mine. And uh, we'll just definitely explore this whole kit making process together. Thanks for your time.